All right, this is the uh, TCAP practice test for grade 7, the math section. We're doing question number 46. Bags of candy are on sale. Hooray. The graph shows the relationship between the number of bags of candy, which they list down here in the X axis, and uh, the sale price of those bags. So the sale price would be here. So any point on this graph, I can find out how much uh, a number of bags cost. Let's say I wanted four bags. I would go here make a dot, come over, it's somewhere between 6 and 7, let's say 650, whatever. Now, that's how that graph would be set up. The question asks, based on the graph, what is the closest to the sale price for 30 bags of candy? There's a couple ways we can go about this. The nice thing about the graph is that it's a straight line. If it's not a straight line, it gets a little weird because you can't say that each bag costs the same amount. But as long as you have a straight line, it means that your slope is the same. So you can go for each number bag of candy you go over, you have to go the same amount up. So it's the same each time. So it's easy to use that information to figure out exactly how much one bag of candy costs. My suggestion is that you pick a point on the line or the dotted line where it crosses one of the corners of these little squares that they've created in the grid. And a perfect example is right here. That's the point we're going to use. At that case, or at that situation, six bags of candy leads to a total price of $10. So I'm going to use that information, $10, for six bags of candy. Now, to find out what one bag of candy is, I can either set up a proportion, because I have two ideas, so two things, sale price, number of bags, that's two things. I have three numbers. Um, I know that I'm looking for one bag over here, so I would put the one bag on the bottom, and then I just solve for x. I could also do it much easier than that, and uh, or I could set it up like this and end up doing 10 times 1 divided by 6, and that tells me the cost per bag. Or, in this case, since it's just a unit rate I'm looking for, all I have to do is divide 10 by 6, and I get that one bag cost a dollar and 67 cents. It's actually a dollar and two, one and two thirds dollars, whatever. But uh, the way that I could get this answer, by the way, is 10 times 1 and then divide by the 6. So it's cross multiply and divide. Or much easier, just do 10 divided by 6. If the other number is a 1, you just can do the regular fraction. So you do 10 divided by 6, you get uh, 1.67, whatever, whatever. Now, that's how much one bag cost. But I want to know what the uh, price for 30 bags is. So I can use that information, which is conveniently placed, and uh, convert it using this $1.67 that I've created. So I have $1.67 for one bag, so I'm going to multiply that times 30 bags. If I do that, it helps, by the way, if you didn't uh, retype in $1.67 and you kept the original 1.6 repeating on your calculator. You multiply that times 30 and you end up with $50. So our answer is G. What if you don't want to look at it that way? What if you want to try something else that might be just as easy or easier? If you can think about it in a way of working in groups, you're in good shape here. So we're still going to use this same point that we used before. But in this case, I'm going to look at the fact that I have six bags. And for my final, I need to get to 30 bags. What I'm looking for is how many groups of six bags can get me to 30, which is a multiply question. If you're talking about a number of groups, it's a multiply thing. So what do I have to multiply six by to get to 30? And of course, six times five is 30. I can use that information to figure out the sale price. So at six bags, it was $10. So if I use that same uh, group of five scenario, I just do 10 times five, which gives me 50 bucks. Either way, we'll get you to the same answer of $50, which is, of course, the correct answer for this question. So whatever way you like the best, do that and uh, be very consistent about it. You should be fine.